Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani. Today we're going to take on a bit more of a complicated issue, which is why do people sort of stick in these relationships with narcissists as long as they do? And when is it too long to the point where it starts doing real harm to you? Thank you as always to all of you for helping make this community of YouTube subscribers who are better equipped to deal with narcissism and also to be able to share this information with their friends and loved ones and family members to help protect them as well. Please hit the bell, subscribe, we've got two new videos coming out a week. So let's talk about this idea of sticking it out with a narcissist. I have recently been having some interesting conversations with people and it sort of gelled for me and hit me that people don't like the idea of leaving the party too soon. They would rather be in a situation where they stay at the party long enough that they're like, yeah, I done seen this party through versus leaving too soon and finding out, wow, things got actually pretty interesting. Now, you don't want to stay at the party so long that it's humiliating or embarrassing. A better example might be a casino table. You know, listen, what's the fear at the casino table? That the next hand, I'm gonna, I'm about to hit, hit 10 blackjacks, right? And if I leave now, mm, that's gonna happen. But then if you sit and you bust 10 times, and you've lost a lot more money, now you've sat at the table too long. So let's talk about this entire model with a narcissist. And it may be a narcissistic partner, it may be a narcissistic friend, it could be a narcissistic coworker or boss or job or, or, or any of these things. Why do we stay around for so long? What some people want, and I see this now, and listen, I know, I know some of you are thinking oh, this is going to be true of me too. They want enough data. They want enough support for leaving. So they feel confident that, yep, I know. This was definitely not going to change. They kept staying. They kept staying. And you know what? And, and, and really, you guys, I'd love for you to think about this. I'm guessing that a lot of you actually didn't think it was going to change, but you wanted to be 100% sure that this pattern you were dealing with was indeed a pattern, no matter what. I'm amazed at how many people stuck it out like, all right, yeah, he cheated five times with five different people. I think we're pretty clear on what we're dealing with. Or he flaked on my important exhibition three different times. Yeah, I think I know what I'm dealing with. Or he missed the kids' soccer game six Saturdays in a row. Yep, I think I know it's six years in a row, whatever it is. You need enough data. You need them to yell at you enough, to lie to you enough to cheat on you enough, to deceive you enough, to screw you over enough that you're like, yep, clearly established, this is a pattern. Here's the rub, I get it. Listen, I'm the first one to say, cause I'm somebody who actually kind of does tend to get like a little bit, I'm prone to regret. So I like to be very sure, you know, before I make a decision, sometimes to a fault. So a lot of us stick around so that like, the day we walk out, there is not a moment of doubt. In fact, I'd love to hear some of your thoughts on this. How many of you stayed at the party too long with a narcissist, stayed in the relationship too long because you wanted to be absolutely sure that this was truly toxic before you left? I'd be, I'd be curious to think, how long did you stay? Like, How long do you think was too long? Did you stay six months too long? Did you stay five years too long? would love to hear your comments on this one. But here's the thing. You stay that long and then there's that day you're like, absolutely not. Like, this is not good for me. This is toxic. This is unhealthy. I'm out. But then the question becomes, in staying so long so you could have that conviction, how much harm did you do to yourself? Because while one could argue that the human psyche, the human spirit, the human soul is actually quite resilient, I've got to tell you that in the clients I've worked with, who stayed in any kind of narcissistic relationship for a long time. These are just not, these aren't just romantic relationships. These are with parents, siblings, um, uh, coworkers, best friends, you name it. That the damage of this lasted for years. They still doubted their judgment. Five years out, like, mm, I don't know, maybe not, or maybe I'm wrong, or still second guess themselves. They still had self doubt. It still impacted their self-esteem. 
They still weren't able to be kind to themselves. They still did all the second guessing and the questioning of themselves that started in that relationship. So the longer you stay, the longer those echoes will last. Now, some of you might be thinking, damn, Dr. Romani, this was my mother. I've been in this relationship my whole damn life. I get that. But the moment you realize what you're dealing with, I am not telling you to divorce your mother. I am telling you though, to be realistic about what you're dealing with. So when your mom makes that mean spirited comment about your weight or your dad makes that really kind of underhanded, like, Oh, I bet they're not paying you more for that, for that promotion kind of comment. You have to have that internal chuckle. Like here they go again. I got this. And you almost smile knowingly to yourself right? You may not be able to leave it, but the sooner you get that knowledge of what you're dealing with, you can set up the fences, you can set up the boundaries so that at least you can maintain the expectations and at least create psychological distance, if not literal distance. That boundary line between the conviction of when you need to leave and the harm that comes from staying too long is one of the great paradoxes of a narcissistic relationship. I can't sit here and tell you how long is too long. Some people meet someone and as we've, we've clearly, we've clearly stated, narcissists are not black and white. It's subtle and they may have certain qualities that are very compelling to you, even if they're just nostalgia and history. So we have our good moments to get to that point of conviction takes a different amount of time for each of us, but you got to ask yourself, how well do you really need to learn to take a punch? And I don't mean necessarily a literal punch, but how many, how good do you have to get at taking on insults? The more we hear that stuff, the more it cuts away at our hearts, our minds, and our souls. The only way anyone in the world is ever going to respect you is if you're the first one to do it. And that can be very hard to do. If you had narcissistic parents or parents and never got to learn that in the first place, it means that it gets harder to get to that point of conviction that it's time to go and that you don't stay so long that you're at the point of harm. It's really robbing Peter to pay Paul. How long is too long to stay and how much harm do you do to yourself if you stay too long? I wish I could give you an absolute answer on this one. It's not my place to tell you, you've got to leave now, but I will tell you this. If you're dealing with a narcissist, no matter what, realistic expectations, radical, ex radical acceptance, not personalizing, and trying to minimize the engagement, that is the best way to start so that you can figure out what your exit strategy looks like or how you're going to end up maintaining boundaries in this relationship in the long term. Thanks as always for tuning in. Please hit the bell please subscribe. And again, as a reminder that my new book, don't you know who I am is, is going to be out any day. Those advanced sales matter a lot to get the word on this book out to as many people as possible details below on how to order it. And again, thank you.